Hello, my name is Marshall Hammock, and I will be representing Chryslophora rafidilis, or the common green lacewing. The debate topic is which is more beneficial, the green lacewing or the honeybee? The green lacewing is a small at 12 to 12, 20 millimeters in length, green with golden eyes and big green transparent wings, and feed on nectar, pollen, and aphid honeydew. The green lacewing, while being an excellent pollinator for fruit and vegetables, crops alike, is arguably most beneficial to humans, not as an adult, but rather in its larva stage. The female green lacewing lays her egg lays her white lollipop looking eggs on the leaves of plants during the summer or spring around aphid territories. When the eggs hatch in three to six days, they produce the larva, which are usually brown or gray and are best known for their large pincers and developed legs. The larval stage lasts two to three weeks and involves three instar periods, during which the larvas seek out aphids and will consume anywhere from 100 to 600 aphids during this period of development, after which time the third instars will find a hidden part on a plant and make their silk cocoons. After two weeks in the cocoon, the green lacewing adults will emerge and pollinate plants and eventually mate before starting the circle of life over again. Specifically, the larvas of the green lacewing are very beneficial to human society because of their ability to prey upon so many aphids. The aphid, also known as plant lice, are little parasitic insects that suck the fluids from plants. Uh, pass plant viruses and make excretions that turn black and attract mold onto the plant. The green lacewing larva, as previously stated, will eat anywhere from 100 to 600 aphids in their lifetime. That is a huge level of pest control, especially in the area of agriculture in the United States, where the output of America's farm contributed $136.7 billion from the USDA. Uh, to our GDP, the green lacewing larva is a sustainable, eco-friendly, and organic means of aphid control that allows, the pest, allows for pest protection on vulnerable crops but still allows for organic farming and can lower the use of some chemical pesticides on our foods and ecosystems in some instances. While full-scale commercial use of the green lacewing larva is not currently being utilized in the United States, small experiments have made several conclusions that the lacewing achieved various levels of control uh, of aphids on pepper, potato, tomato, and eggplants, and have, have been used against Colorado potato beetle on potato and eggplant. That... Uh... Howdy, I'm Ryan Johnson and I'll be representing Apis mellifera. Apis mellifera, better known as the honeybee, contains around 20 subspecies and is the most common species of honeybee in the world, with distribution spanning every continent except Antarctica. Honeybees have been notable in human society for centuries, with cave paintings depicting them as early as 6000 BC following their semi-domestication around 2400 BC. Bees were kept in managed hives around 400 AD, showing how early the benefits of bees were understood. With development of movable frame hives in 1682, beekeeping became more accessible and prevalent. Human society has benefited from the use of bees for thousands of years, using their wax, honey, resin, and even collected pollen. These products of bees have been used in various medicinal capacities as well as foodstuff. Currently, bees produce over $150 million of honey in the U.S. annually. Larger than their impact in physical products, honeybees are the single largest pollinator of agriculture and wildlife in the world, pollinating more than $15 billion of crops in the U.S. annually. Bees are also responsible for a large amount of cross-pollination, which helps over 30% of the world's crops and 90% of wild plants grow. While foraging for nectar, pollen will often adhere to honeybees, leading to pollination as the bee moves from flower to flower. Honeybees also have a few adaptations that assist in the collection of pollen. Pollen is the only protein source for bees, and they have developed a unique way of transporting and storing it. Bees that specialize in the collection of pollen will groom themselves, placing the collected pollen in the knee of a leg before compressing it, where it is then moved to their hind leg and stored in a pollen basket on their tibia. 
Another unique adaptation of the honeybee is that the honey stomach, a pouch located in the thorax before any digestion occurs, that the bee uses to transport back to the hive for processing. Speaking of hives, honeybees are one of few eusocial insects. Because they function as one large social organism, as well as displaying age-based polyethism or job specialization, honeybee models are created to extrapolate connections with human society. They are also studied for their communication techniques, such as the waggle dance and buzz run. The green lacewing adults are very similar to the honeybee because they, they too feed on pollen and nectar plants. This allows for the pollination of crops and flowers just the same as honeybees. Now while they are not as well known for this area of human impact, I think it should be well noted that the green lacewing uh, pollinates just the same as all the other nectar feeding insects. I would also like to add that the green lacewing uh, populations in the United States are not as high as honeybee populations because of honeybee wax and honey farming abilities. Thus the green lacewing will never, will forever pay a second fiddle, will forever play second fiddle in popularity for plant pollination, but it should be, it should be said that is not for the lack of pollination ability but for the lack of representation amongst the popular farming and gardening practitioners. Lastly, I would, like to, I would like to add that unlike honeybee populations, the green lacewing does not specialize. So every single green lacewing that reaches adulthood will be pollinating crops and flowers as opposed to the honeybee populations, where only a select few are pollinating, as well as green, as well, as green lacewings stay close and do not fly great distances due to their wings and body structure. So this also makes them superior to the honeybee in situations for cr where cross-pollination from crops is not desired. While it is true that green lacewings pollinate flowers, they are not as well adapted for it as bees and do not perform pollination on such a large scale. Because bees are eusocial insects living in colonies and have task specialization, they are much more efficient in their jobs. If a bee is foraging for ne nectar, it does not have to worry about feeding the brood, turning the nectar to honey, or colony defense. Due to their large local population and task specialization, honeybees are immensely more important a pollinator than any other insect, especially the green lacewing. It is also important to note that when a bee is foraging for nectar, it typically sticks to one species of flower, changing once that resource has been used. This limits cross-pollination. Lacewings are also much more susceptible to attack from predators due to their lack of defense systems as adults. While the honeybee ovipositor in all workers is converted to a stinger, lacewings do not have such a def defense system as an adult. This hardiness makes the bees more survivable and prolongs their benefit. The green lacewing greatest contribution, however, is not like the honeybee because the green lacewing provides a selfless service to our agricultural sector in the United States rather than creating commodities for our consumption. The green lacewing larva eats pests and parasitic insects, usually, but definitely not limited to aphids, that can spread, that can spread and devastate entire fields and greenhouses in short periods of time. Having a natural guardian angel that organically and sustainably protects our foods in a time where pesticides and chemical spraying are is very high and affecting the ecosystem the way that it is. There should be no question that with humans new knowledge of the green lacewing and ability to create full scale full scale lacewing farms which already exist for the honeybee that the green lacewing has the ability to save thousands of dollars for those working in the agricultural sector every year and earn new income to save crops from the prey of the green lacewing. While it is true the green lacewing is great at aphid control, there are other insects that perform the task of pest control just as well, such as the praying mantis which has the benefit of taking larger prey. There are also organic treatments such as garlic spray for aphids that can be applied more consistently than trying to manage the lacewing population. The idea of trying to manage a colony of lacewings, or lacewing farms, is very different than managing honeybee hives. Lacewings are not eusocial insects and do not collaborate in the same way as bees. Trying to manage them in farms would present many different issues, such as containing the population to a specific location. Unlike honeybees, lacewings do not have nests, so once they are out of the larval stage, they can fly away. 
Constantly buying eggs or larval lace wings also increase costs. The fact that the use of green lace wings is not as widespread as honeybees indirectly shows how much more important the population considers bees. In conclusion, the honeybee may look like the natural choice for most beneficial to humans because we reap their, their benefits every day and that they are more well known and popular in our society. However, the organic impact that the green lacewing has on the agricultural industry should not be ignored and in fact should be studied further on the feasibility to be mass farmed on the scale that honeybees are and how sustainable that would be to maintain larvae consistently, etc, etc. Further work should be done on whether the overwhelmingly successful results in the small-scale farming operations in crop and pest control that was seen in Texas with the elimination of the bullworms, in the European vineyards, or in the Germanic sugar beet fields, etc., could be duplicated on the commercial level here in the United States and further utilized as a viable form of eco-friendly crop pest control. Lastly, in regards to research development, the green lacewing should be studied, should be studied um, as a more viable pollinator for farms and prove that in situations where cross-pollination is not desired, whether the green lacewing could be instrumental in preserving the crops of farmers in these regards due to their limiting flying abilities and behaviors. All of these areas of research might be able to bring to light the amazing tool for organic and sustainable pest control that the insect world has to offer humans with the green lacewing and its superior contributions for humans. All of these benefits all come from one green little insect that doesn't sting people. And I think that it's far more superior in benefiting humans. In closing, honeybees are the most beneficial insect due to their large scale pollination and products they provide to humanity. The physical adaptations, such as the honey stomach and pollen basket, as well as the small hairs on their body, allow them to efficiently complete pollination tasks. Because of these adaptations and age-based polyethism, Apis mellifera is a powerhouse insect in human society. They have benefited humanity not only through the wax and honey that they make, but also as a source of research on communication and community. Their ability to defend themselves and the hive, as well as placing the survival of the hive above self, makes them a strong and resilient insect. The importance of honeybees has been known for thousands of years, leading to their semi-domestication in many strategies of management. Honeybees are a global insect with a huge impact on agriculture, and without them, nutrition for humans would suffer greatly, making them the most beneficial insect to us.